After this visualization module, you'll be familiar with the Mercury interface and you'll know all the basic options and menus. You'll be able to change the display of your structure and see how molecules pack together. You will have also learned how to create high resolution images ready for your project reports, publications or presentations. To help you learn more from the CSD, we have a range of associated software to search, visualize, analyze, and learn from the data. In this module, we'll be using our visualization and analysis software called Mercury. There is a free version of Mercury available in CSD community that enables you to do the basics of structure visualization. For more advanced visualization and analysis, as well as access to the entire CSD, you'll need our license version available in CSD Core. This module explores the basics of Mercury, so it can be completed using either version. So what is Mercury? So with Mercury, you can explore over 1 million crystal structures available in the CSD. So you can look at molecular conformations and then things like crystallographic planes and morphologies. Um, it enables you to generate high quality structural images for effective communication or do things like output model files for 3D printing. It's also a really good tool for analysis. So you can analyze geometries, interactions, and the packing inside um, the structures. So this is where we start to um, see what Mercury looks like. So if you have got it installed and want to open it up now, you should see this icon or you can navigate to Mercury in your start menu. Um, once we click on um, this icon, we should see the Mercury interface. So we can see our 3D visualization, um, which is the main part of Mercury. And again, we can see um, the structures in the CSD listed by ref code. So just a reminder, our ref code is our database reference code and structures with the same substance are assigned the same six letter code plus an additional two numbers. And if you want to navigate to a particular ref code, you can type it in the structure navigator box at the top on the right. Um, so some basics to um, get to use Mercury um, is left mouse button and move allows you to rotate the structure. Middle mouse button and moves allows you to move your structure. Right mouse button and move allows you to zoom in and out. Okay. With the keyboard, you can also use this in combination with your mouse. So you can do shift and left mouse or control and left mouse. If you want to see some menus for the visualization window, then if you're near a molecule and you right click, um, you get to see this menu option. And if you're away from a molecule, then you see this menu option. So that allows you to change some of the display options as well. You'll also see that there's a number of additional menus on your Mercury interface um, and if um, some of those disappear or you want to see more then the place to go is display and toolbars and then you can select which toolbars are being displayed. So the one that allows you to explore the CSD is our structure navigator toolbar. So if that ever disappears or you want to get it back then display toolbars and structure navigator. Um, the other thing that's going to be useful is this reset button on the bottom left. So as we start to play around with the display and what we're seeing in the structures, we might move away from kind of default settings. If we want to set it back to a clean setting, then we can press reset. So we've seen the structure navigator and how we can explore the structures in the CSD, but you might have your own structures. So if you want to use your own structure, um, you can do that too. So you go to the file and then open to open one of your own files and more likely is that you'll be using a SIF file to open, but there are other file types. A SIF file doesn't have chemical connectivity um, contained within the file um, usually. So you need to go through a process to assign bond types. So to do that, you go to edit, auto edit structure and assign bond types. Um, and you can make Mercury do that automatically every time you do it by going to file, auto edit structure, onload to automate. 
So there are a number of different display options in Mercury and to see these we can go to the display menu. So the first one we're going to look at is the styles. So display styles um, and you can see we've selected wireframe here or instead of going to the menu we could also go to style in our toolbar at the top and select wireframe. If we wanted to look at cap sticks we can again use two different ways to do that or we could choose to do ball and stick or space fill. And then there are two other options. One of them is ellipsoid. So that shows the anisotropic displacement parameters. So they're only available for CSD structures with ADPs or your own structures with ADPs. And they show or indicate the thermal vibrations of the atom. So you can see here they are more like a, a rugby ball shape in most of the cases. Um, there's a number of settings that you can change for the ellipsoid display and to change those you go to display styles ellipsoid settings. Um, so for example you could change the probability um, of finding the electron density so it's normally set at 50% I think. If you're looking more at metal organic structures you might be interested in the polyhedral display option. So again that can be found in display styles polyhedral and that's got a number of um, settings. So you can see that the central elements are the atoms around which polyhedra are centered and the ligand elements are neighboring atoms which create the corners of the polyhedron. And you can change some of those settings or, or make uh, the polyhedron more transparent. So as well as changing the styles, we could also choose to change the colors. So again, that's found in display, colors, and then you've got a number of different options and again like style you've got a drop down box on your toolbar at the top as well to change so here we are coloring by symmetry equivalence or we could um, choose to color by elemental suppression so when a crystal structure has got atoms where two sets of atomic coordinates have been um, determined and it's disordered between those two sets um, when we enter structures into the CSD, we normally suppress the minor occupancy um, site. So you can color that minor occupancy in a different color. And um, you can see two examples of that here. As well as changing the atom and element types, you could change the background colors. Um, so if we go to display and display options, you've got a number of different options here. And one of them is the background. So you can either pick a solid background color um, or different types of gradient colors. And we could go through each of these. One of them that can sometimes be quite interesting is lighting. So if you want to change where the lighting comes from um, in the display, you can change the lighting, but there's a number of other ones that you might want to explore. If you've got your favorite style, so you always want a certain element to be a different color than normal or a different background, then what you might want to do is save a pre-saved combination of settings so that includes styles styles options colors background colors etc and you can personalize that so if you go along the toolbar at the top you can see manage styles and there's a drop down with some already in there but you can create your own as well um, up until now, we've been looking more at the different display options and looking at the molecule. But what about if we want to explore the 3D nature of the crystal in more detail? To do that, we're probably going to want to turn on the packing, so how the molecule is packed together in our crystal. So we can either go to um, calculate and packing and slicing, and that pulls up a um, pop up where we can choose how many unit cells are displayed and whether our unit cell axes are displayed, or we could go to our display options box or toolbar at the bottom and turn on packing and show cell axes. So you can now see I've got two molecules displayed and my unit cell. And again, as we go through and as you start to play around with Mercury, don't forget the reset button on the bottom left. So if you want to find more information out about the structure that's not displayed in the 3D, 
then you can go to this more info box. And if we go to more info um, and structure information, then we start to see some of the information like compound name and um, the unit cell length, the space group. But there's a number of different options that we can can choose along here. And we can also calculate a powder pattern based on the atomic coordinates um, in the structure displayed by going to powder. Um, and then that calculates a powder pattern, um, which you can then um, save or customize. If you're interested in actually touching a 3D structure, um, then, and you've got a 3D printer at your institution or at home, then you might want to use the 3D printing functionality in Mercury. So um, to use this, that's in the file menu. So if you go to file and then print in 3D, you then see the 3D printing pop up and you get a number of choices. So you can either um, choose to print in color or monochrome. And if it's a complicated structure where perhaps not all of the um, components are are joined together, so maybe it's a multi-component structure, then you are going to want to choose to generate a support framework too. And then when you press generate, it creates a 3D printing file that you can then send to your 3D printer. So in this example, we can see um, MOF5, one of the more famous MOF structures in the CSD printed out. As well as doing 3D printing, we can also create high quality images. Um, and to do that, there's an integration with Povray. So you need to go to the file menu and Povray image. That then takes you to a um, Povray image pop up. And you've again got a number of options. These are some of the options that I sometimes use. So you can change the resolution. So depending on how high resolution you want the image, you can play about with your width and height in pixels. And you can also change the materials properties. Um, so there's a number of different options you can choose here. And you can also change the background. So if you wanted to overlay um, your image over um, other images, then you're probably going to want to choose transparent. Before doing a full vendor, which depending on your resolution can sometimes take a while, um, we'd recommend you do the preview just to make sure everything in your image is captured and then you can go on to do a full render. And so you can see here um, how we've previewed the image. Once we're happy, we'd then press render. And here's an example where we have created a high resolution image using Povray and Depending on your screen resolution, you might just about see some of the um, reflective properties of this image as well. So it really is quite a high resolution and looks nice in um, presentations. One of the things that Mercury can do is allow you to analyse the structure in more detail. So one of the simple ways to do that is measure um, some of the distances, angles and torsions. To do that, we can change our picking mode. So along the top toolbar, instead of pick atoms, we could select to measure distances. And then once we do that, we select the atoms that we want to measure the distances between. They can either be um, connected atoms or unconnected atoms, or we could um, instead select to measure distances by using the mouse. So we could do a right click on our mouse and go to measure, measure distances. Um, as well as measuring distances, we might also want to display labels. So to do that, we have um, a tick box option along the top toolbar that says show labels for. In this example, we're showing labels for non carbons and hydrogens. Um, but there's a number of different um, options on the show labels and we can also move our labels. So we could go to picking mode here and move labels so you can um, make them move to where you want them to be. We could also choose to change the label size by going to display labels uh, and label size. And we could also change the label color um, via that route as well. If we've got a chiral molecule, then a useful piece of functionality in Mercury enables us to display the chirality. So um, 
Again, we're going to go to show labels and this time we're going to select stereo centres with stereo chemistry. And in this example, so in example RERXIV is my ref code, I can now see the chirality of the molecule. <laughs> 